That's right, ladies and gents. Another year, another NUC launch. And another chance for ETA Prime to falsely claim he had the first review. Ah, yes. I waited six months to make that joke. But seriously, don't do it again. Intel loaned me the NUC 13 Pro unit, codenamed Arena Canyon. And boy oh boy does it have some stiff competition from the recent explosion of AMD mini PCs. So we're going to see how the Intel NUC 13 holds up not only against the last gen NUC 12, but against AMD's finest as well. This NUC 13 Pro unit features the i7-1360p, a 12-core processor which is very similar to last year's 1260p. But it sees a 300 MHz bump in clock speed across the board, and the iGPU gets a 100 MHz increase. How exciting! So, what else has changed? Surprisingly, very little. The Mini itself looks almost identical to last year's NUC 12 Pro, apart from the Intel NUC logo on the top. Wow, so awesome. Even the ports are exactly the same. With NUC 12 Pro, I could forgive the lack of DDR5 memory, even if I didn't agree with the decision. But NUC 13 still uses DDR4, which is inexcusable. DDR5 kits have greatly fallen in price, and plenty of AMD Minis have made the switch. The LAN jack has been bumped up to the newer i226 model, and that's the only differences I've spotted. You still have the dual Thunderbolt 4 ports and HDMI 2.1. This pre-production sample doesn't show what you get in the box. I think it's safe to assume everything from the NUC 12 Pro will be included. The outer shell is still plastic. It's high quality plastic, but NUC 11 and older were all anodized aluminium. You know, like space age shit, which made them hard as rocks and good for a beating. Kudos if you picked up the crude joke. An assumption I do make with NUC 13 Pro is that pricing will be the same, which means around 1,000 Aussie pesos for the i7. That's a substantial bit of coin. Okay, enough about the price tag and lack of innovation. Let's have a look inside. Not too much has changed here either. There's a 2242 SATA storage expansion slot and the usual suspects. This is new, whatever it is. Intel provided me with a complete build with a Gen 4 NVMe SSD and 32GB of 3200MHz DDR4 memory. But this unit normally comes bare bones and needs memory, storage and an OS to get things running. While I do all my testing in Windows, I do check out if the minis can run Linux straight off the USB and to my surprise, everything worked fine. Even the newer 2.5GB LAN jack. When it comes to the benchmarks, should I compare to an AMD processor based on segmentation or power draw? I couldn't decide, so let's do both. As well as last year's i7 for generational improvements. The Ryzen 6800H is the closest CPU in the lineup segmentation wise, and the 6900HX is the next closest by power draw. Intel CPUs lead in single core performance, and the i7-1360P is no different. It's all Intel at the top of this stack. A 7% increase gen on gen. Not much to write home about. But compared to the 6900HX, it's 23% ahead and 27% compared to the 6800H. That's a sizable margin. But single core, as important as it is, isn't everything. My i7 NUC 12 Pro from last year consistently performed slightly worse than the i5 in this 10 minute multi-core test. And compared to this score, 1360p is 17% ahead, but it still falls behind the 6900HX by 4%. It's ahead of the 6800H by just under 5%. Interestingly, the 1360p comes out as the winner in the video encoding test by just over 1% against the 6900HX and 2% compared to the 6800H, which is an 11% increase gen on gen. This 11% is probably the more accurate gen on gen increase since the i7 NUC 12 Pro failed to boost past the i5 unit. The i7 1360p is the fastest DDR4 iGPU, in 3D mark at least. DX11 it's 9% ahead gen on gen, but around 17% behind the Radeon 680M, found in both the 6800H and 6900HX. In DX12, the 1360p is only a 4% improvement gen on gen. Against AMD's finest, it's 30% behind. Intel's still doing okay on the CPU side, but definitely lagging on the iGPU front. So the pro line of NUCs are targeted at businesses as a consumer line was killed off two years ago. But 
Using games to show real-world performance differences is useful, as synthetic benchmarks only go so far. Q, an emotionally charged comment of, You mean, you actually game on these? They're for running MS Office. Really? Well, you know you could run MS Office on a 200 US dollar mini PC, right? Right? If you're spending quadruple that to run MS Office, you're doing it so, so wrong. Anyway, I thought we'd start off with a gen on gen comparison, as I only captured Nuktor Pro gaming footage at 720p, and I no longer have the unit. In Forza Horizon 5, you'll get around 12% more frames on average, and around 17% in Hades. And God of War was a similar result to Forza Horizon 5. In these three games at least, there was a double digit improvement, which is better than expected. And here we have the one 1080p comparison I do have of the esports title Valorant. The NUC 13 Pro has a better frame rate overall. Valorant is a game that looks to be memory bandwidth starved by the low GPU utilization. Okay, now again with the AMD CPUs this time. Keep in mind the 6800H uses the same Radeon 680M as the 6900HX and uses less power than the NUC. I've also added the mid-range Ryzen 5 6600U for an additional interesting comparison. In Elden Ring, the 6600U matches the NUC 13 Pro. The 6800H is double the frame rate in Cyberpunk. All that is nothing compared to God of War, where the NUC falls behind even the 6600U. Yikes. NUC 13 Pro does lead in emulating Breath of the Wild by around 10%. With PS3 emulation, it's back to being slightly better than the 6600U. Skate 3, same deal. In Motorstorm, the NUC holds up better, but Intel's iGPU doesn't render graphics properly. Welcome to Glitchfest City. Population, NUC 13 Pro. EGPUs rarely work without workarounds, and the NUC 13 Pro is no different. Normally you plug in your Thunderbolt cable into the back and have the HDMI connected to the NUC. Then boot into Windows and install your GPU driver. Finally, you'll shut down your Mini and plug the HDMI into your eGPU. Unfortunately, in my case, trying to install the NVIDIA driver resulted in a blue screen of death. To fix this, search for Power Plan Settings, Advanced, PCI Express, and change the Link State Power Management from Maximum to Off. Then you should be able to install the driver. I was able to play on the NUC without any issue over the Thunderbolt port for a few hours. Of course, you'll be bandwidth limited by the 40 gigabit port, which makes high frame rate gaming like this very unpleasant. The frame rate was wildly jumping from as low as 60 to 150, and it was nauseating. Make sure to cap it to 60 or so to get a decent experience. The high end NUCs run hot when they're pushed. There's no miracle here. For those wondering, yes, this temperature of 99C is safe, and the NUC 13 Pro is rated for 24 7 use by Intel. It's just that you might see some performance loss due to thermal throttling like seen in the NUC 12 Pro benchmark. Intel NUCs always do a good job of keeping NVMe SSD temps under control. The included Samsung drive for this review unit stayed under 70C when under load. Idle power draw is up over last gen, as is max power draw with the NUC 13 Pro hitting the top of the charts and matching the 6900HX. You can see the difference in power efficiency for gaming performance 
against the 6800H, even if we're not comparing the actual power draw while gaming. Noise levels improved over the i7 Nuktor Pro. There was a slight drop in both idle and load readings. In the BIOS you'll find the usual NUC settings, including the ability to change PL1, PL2 and TAU by switching this option to user defined. You can also mess with the fan curve. The phrase, if it ain't broken don't fix it, is a famous one that only applies to products with no competition or that don't improve technologically, something like a hammer. This ain't a hammer and needs some new tricks. Where once it was knuck or bust in the mini PC space, now there are heaps of alternatives. For consumers, the Ryzen 6000 series minis makes the most sense in the majority of cases. Where Intel NUC Excel is the warranty, which is three years in Australia, and of course, the support. While most minis will receive driver updates, Intel NUCs get them first, as well as BIOS updates for many years, and for some, this is important and worth the extra dollars. Okay, let's look at the pros and cons. There's an okay performance jump gen on gen, an unbeaten three year warranty, might be different in your country, so check if interested, unbeaten software support. But it's still a plastic shell, no DDR5 support, seriously? Poor graphics performance compared to Ryzen 6000 series units, and well, it's still the same old design. With its likely high price tag and skewed performance to the CPU side of things, NUC 13 Pro fits a very small niche. Businesses, those needing VPro, which costs extra, and those unwilling to buy a Chinese branded mini PC for whatever reason. NUC 13 Pro Arena Canyon is fine and a small performance improvement over NUC 12 Pro. And that's it really. Are you interested in one? If so, why? Why not? I'd like to hear your thoughts and in the meantime, why not check out the B-Link Sursix Pro featuring the Ryzen 6800H. Cheers!